China finished hosting the Winter Paralympics last night, and for all its song and dance about its neutrality on the world stage, China has made its choice, siding with Russia against Ukraine. Vladimir Putin arrived in Beijing on a rare foreign visit just three weeks before his invasion. His host, President Xi Jinping, may have persuaded him to delay it a bit, but the two men signed a 5,000-word statement pledging no limits to their cooperation. The Chinese won a 30-year deal to import Russian gas, and this alliance shares a determination to thwart America's global domination. But at this hotel in Rome this morning, it was the Americans who were trying to break up any Sino-Soviet pact. U.S. diplomats reportedly warned this Chinese delegation not to give the Russians weapons, never mind that NATO is arming Ukraine. The Americans are angry that China refused to even condemn Russia's war. We are communicating directly, privately to Beijing that there will absolutely be consequences for uh, large-scale sanctions, evasion efforts, or support uh, to Russia to backfill them. We will not allow that to go forward and allow there to be a, a lifeline to Russia from these economic sanctions from any country anywhere in the world. Yet President Xi agrees with Russia that American interference is the problem. In China's case, it's their opposition to him taking back Taiwan and calling the plight of Chinese Uyghurs a genocide. The Chinese have even backed Russia's unproven claim that the Americans have been making biological weapons in Ukraine. In light of the documents, pictures, materials and other evidence found by Russia in Ukraine, the U.S. tried to muddle through by simply calling it disinformation. This cannot assure or convince the public. COVID is a bigger threat to China than war in Eastern Europe. Beijing is in the midst of the biggest national outbreak in two years, with its zero-tolerance strategy coming at huge economic cost. Nevertheless, Chinese journalists are reporting the Ukraine war from the side of Russian forces besieging Mariupol. Chinese weapons, in particular drones, could make a significant difference on the battlefield. And China may prefer a deluded President Putin as its neighbour than a Russia turning towards democratic Europe. So you don't think that President Xi of China will intervene with Vladimir Putin and persuade him to, to call off the dogs of war? I think that is most unlikely. I th well, you know, will he be looking to nudge him in the direction of a face-saving outcome? Possibly. You know, and, and China is now clearly um, somewhat on the horns of a dilemma here. They're not going to walk away from their relationship with Russia. The, the stakes are too big. And uh, Xi Jinping personally has invested uh, too much in this. During the Paralympics, Chinese journalists were told to censor anti-Russian views, while the state broadcaster simply failed to translate an Olympic official's criticism of the conflict. Because this is not just a war lapping at NATO's doorstep, but one which unites the two biggest opponents of the American-led order which followed the end of the Cold War. Well, joining me now is Steve Tsang, the director of the China Institute at the School of Oriental and African Studies, and John Herbst, who's a former U.S. ambassador to Ukraine and now a director of the Atlantic Council. Mr. Herbst, if I can begin with you, does the United States have the power, the clout, to deter China from supporting Russia, or is it in danger of pushing China into a more overt alliance with, 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 with Russia? I think that she is embarrassed by the nastiness and the failure thus far of Putin's war in Ukraine, and may be wondering if it was a smart move to associate himself so closely with Putin during the time of the Olympics. Uh, the fact that Russia is asking China for military aid suggests that Moscow's own capability to prosecute this war is not quite up to snuff. So that's an embarrassment, too, which I'm sure is understood well in Beijing. Uh, the United States certainly can take measures that would make China uncomfortable, although I don't think those measures by themselves would deter 
the Chinese from coming to Russia's aid. But I'm not sure also, picking up on what I said just before, that China wants to be even more closely associated with what looks like a failed venture. When the United States talks about consequences for China, if it aids Russia, what does it mean? And, and, and can the United States also absorb the pain of those kinds of sanctions? Well, that, that's a fair question because um, we have an intense and mutually beneficial, in many respects, though not all, economic relationship with Beijing. But I imagine there are some things that they could, they could do that might, at a minimum, cause at least a little bit of pain in Beijing, recognizing that there probably would be some countermeasure coming from the Chinese government. And, and do you think it is possible to get the Chinese then to get the Russians to cease fire? Well, that, that may also be a bridge too far. Uh, I think from the standpoint of the current circumstances, it would simply be a good thing if Russia did not provide any additional help, to, excuse me, if China did not provide any additional help to Putin as he prosecutes his barbaric war on the people of Ukraine. Let me bring in Steve Sang here. Um, Steve, what do you think President Xi's position is here? Well, Xi Jinping is not happy with the state of affair in Ukraine. I think Xi Jinping must have known that Putin was having a plan for Ukraine when they met in Beijing, but they both miscalculated. They both thought that the Russian forces would be much more effective and efficient, and they both underestimated the tenacity and the bravery of the Ukrainian armed forces and the Ukrainian people in resisting it. So they found themselves in a situation that they never really wanted to be in to begin with. So it sounds rather like you agree with Ambassador Herb. So where, where does that leave President Xi in terms of what he says to Putin? Well, Xi Jinping will support Putin. Um, this is a very strong personal support for Putin, not only because of the so-called uh, romance between the two men, but because they share a lot of things in common as fellow strongmen of former, of former and current Communist Party. And Xi Jinping would not want to see somebody like Putin uh, suffer from humiliation or defeat and potentially have his position being weakened within Russia, because that could set off uh, people in China to think about challenging Xi Jinping. But Xi Jinping will not keep to his promise of unlimited friendship and rock-solid support for Russia if it means that China will face real and serious economic sanction from the United States in a year when Xi Jinping's priority is to maintain stability and uh, a strong economy, economy so that he can secure his own third term in office. That is the real priority. So, you, so, you, so do you think Russia then will not receive weapons from China? I don't think Russia will receive weapons from China as long as Anthony uh, or uh, Jake Sullivan make it very, very clear in their meeting with the Chinese counterpart in uh, room that very severe economic sanctions will be triggered if Chinese arms were delivered to the Russians. If the American threat is not credible, that's a different story. I think the Chinese will believe that. And, and do you also think the Chinese will not try to make the Russians stop, that they will not broker a ceasefire? There's a lot of hope of that in the West. China is not really neutral in the war in Ukraine, in spite of the official claim that China is neutral. China is rock solid behind Russia. The limits to China's rock solid support for Russia is China's own interest. And there, China does not want to incur significant cost to itself. And that, that is why the American threat to sanction China is a serious threat and is taken seriously. Ambassador Herbst, let me come back to, to you. I mean, more broadly, one of the fears here has been is that we are seeing the world 
realigned, with Russia and China on one side and the West on the other. Do you think we are further down that realignment? Well, I think the world was so, so realigned before Moscow launched this major new invasion. I think that the over, overall security of the West, in fact, has improved as a result of this invasion because um, statesmen in Germany and in France were reluctant to see Putin as an adversary. And therefore, their policies towards Putin's aggressive uh, national security steps were weak. Now, the West is more or less united. They recognize that Russia is a danger. They recognize, too, more clearly that China is a danger. So that's a good thing, uh, because the West collectively, and by the West, I mean not just Western Europe and the United States, but also Japan and Australia, are far stronger than Russia and China together. And if we are stronger and we behave from a position of strength, um, we will be able to manage this crisis, both the war in Ukraine, but also broader Russia and Chinese ambitions. And where do you think this leaves the United Nations? The Security Council is now pointless, isn't it? Um, I think the Security Council is, uh, right now is unable to act because Russia is not going to permit any action, and China will back Russia in the Council, more or less. Uh, if, in fact, Putin decides that he cannot win in Ukraine, and he can't win in Ukraine, the question is how, much, how many more tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of Ukrainian civilians will he murder before he realizes that? Then the UN may be part of a solution when Russia withdraws its forces from Ukraine. Until then, I think its role will be simply in the UNGA, in the General Assembly, to voice uh, the sharp condemnation of 85 or so percent of the world's countries of Moscow's aggression against Ukraine and its people. And, and finally, Steve Sang, just very briefly, do you think they're feeling more secure in Taiwan now? The Taiwanese will feel that they really need to take the threat from China very, very seriously. I think they believe that they may have got a few extra years, but they are crystal clear that the Chinese government under Xi Jinping will try to take Taiwan, and if Taiwan will not surrender and Taiwan will not, then force will be used. Steve Sang and John Herbst, thank you both very much indeed.